Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can create a landing page using a simple HTML and CSS. This is not just a simple static HTML, but we are going to add some functionality to this landing page to make it interactive. So, we will create this simple landing page using HTML and CSS and make it dynamic using JavaScript. So, let's see what we are going to build in this tutorial. In this landing page, we're going to have a simple navigation menu. We have the background images and the timer. We put this timer behind the shops to make this more attractive. Now the best part of this landing page is you can turn off and turn on lights of the street and the shops. So when you turn off the switch, the street lights and the shops lights turn off. And when you turn on this switch, this is going to turn on the street light and the shops light. Isn't it amazing? It is. So let's see how to create this amazing landing page. So before taking your too much time, let's get started. So let's get started and create a simple landing page using HTML and CSS. So I'm going to have here Visual Studio Code Editor. And in this editor, I'm going to have here a simple landing page folder in this editor. In this folder, I'm going to have asset folder, public folder and a simple index.html file. In this asset folder, I'm going to have four images as well as here I have a zip file. So we are going to use all these images in this tutorial. But if you want to experiment with these images, you can use this zip file. And uh, just after that, I have here a public folder, which is empty. I will create two files in this folder after a few minutes. Just after that, in the root directory, I have here index.html file. Now let's implement this file and create a simple HTML file snippet. So I'm going to just create here exclamation mark and press enter. So I'm going to have here a simple HTML file snippet and I'm going to name this landing page. And I'm going to link style.css file and main.js file to this index.html file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create here in the public folder style.css file. So I'm going to just say here style.css as well as in this public folder I'm going to create main.js file. Now this is not the best practice to put both these files in the same folder. If you are creating a larger project then make sure you have this style.css file in the separate folder. Because we are creating a small and a simple project I'm going to put both these files in the public folder. Now just after that, I'm going to just link these files to my index.html. So I'm going to just say here link public and specify my style.css file as well as before the closing body tag, I'm going to create here a script tag with a source attribute and to link my main.js file. So it changes and just after that, I'm going to just create here in the body section I'm going to just create my first container. So I'm going to just create here a container. And in this container, I'm going to have a simple navigation menu. So I'm going to just create here a command to, for the documentation and just say here navigation. And I'm going to just create here a nav and specify a class navbar. Now in this navbar, I'm going to just have a simple brand name, the brand name of my website. So I'm going to just create here a division tag with the class brand name. And in this div, I'm going to have h5 heading tag with the text hotels. You can specify any name to this landing page, but I'm going to name it hotels. You can specify this name to the title as well. So if I just say here hotels, then it's look better. Now just after that, just after this division tag right here, I'm going to create another division tag with the class nav items and in this div i'm going to have a different navigation items i'm going to have a ul tag with the class navbar nav so all these classes are custom because we are not going to use any library so we can specify styling to these all classes in the style.css file now in this ul tag i'm going to create li tag and specify a class now link and this is my first navigation link so i'm going to name it home I'm going to copy this li tag, paste it here, just change this navigation link text to pricing. I'm going to paste that again, change the text to contact us. And the last, I'm going to have here a button. So I'm going to say here button and specify class sign in. And the text is going to be sign in. 
if you want you can specify more than three now our items in this navigation menu but i'm going to create only three here save the changes and just open this file in the live server so i'm going to right click here and say open with live server so this is going to open this index.html file in the live server now if you take a look at this index.html file then it looks boring and it's very simple so let's open the style.css file and style this index.html so i'm going to toggle this window on the right side and just open my style.css file and toggle and toggle the style.css file on the left side like this and in this style.css file i'm going to first import fonts from the fonts google api so i'm going to just create here a command and just say here import fonts from google apis so i'm going to just open my browser and here open a new tab and just say here google fonts and from the fonts google website i'm going to just choose my favorite fonts so i'm going to choose here this font and and select my next font also this one now i have two font family selected so i'm going to just import that so i'm going to just select the import statement copy this import statement and paste that inside the style.css file to use these fonts i'm going to just toggle this window on the right side so now in the style.css file i'm going to select first the html tag and then select the body and just remove margin from the elements so i'm going to say margin zero just after that i'm going to create here a truth selector and i'm going to create two variables here which we are going to use throughout this tutorial so i'm going to create here primary gradient and i'm going to specify value to the primary gradient so i'm going to just say here liner gradient and just say here to bottom specify the color and specify my second color here now just after that i'm going to create my second gradient color so i'm going to just say here label gradient and specify line of gradient to this variable as well so now once i have my gradient colors in these variables i can use these variables instead of specifying these values just after that once i have these variables i'm going to just select the container class so i'm going to just see here container and to this container i'm going to specify the default background color so i'm going to say background and specify here a default background color to this container just after that i'm going to specify background url property to this background so i'm going to just say here background url and to this url i'm going to specify background image i'm going to just select my asset folder and select my image here so i'm going to choose the night 3 image here and just after that i'm going to say here background size cover and background repeat no repeat save the changes when you save it you can see you have this background image here and just after that i'm going to specify width and height to this container so i'm going to just see here width 92 vertical width and height is going to be 89 vertical height save the changes this is going to add the vertical height and width to this container and just after that I just wanted to specify the font size so i'm going to just say here font size and to calculate the font i'm going to just call the calci function and to this function i'm going to just specify 10 pixel font size plus the two vertical mean so this is going to make this font responsive now just after that i want to specify color white and margin auto then i'm going to just specify margin top for rem and the last property to center all this text i'm going to use text align center set the changes this is going to center all this text now just after that i'm going to select now bar so i'm going to just create here a command and just specify here navigation and i'm going to select the now bar class and specify display property grid and i want to create two column grid so i'm going to just see here create template columns to the first column i'm going to specify 10 percent and to the second column i'm going to specify 90 percent width when i save it you can see we have two columns here to the first column i have 10 percent width 
and to the second column I have 90% width. Just after that I'm going to specify margin top 1.5 rem and margin left 1.5 rem. Then I'm going to have here font family so I'm going to just say here font family and I just want to specify the imported font family so I'm going to just open my google font and as you can see here I have this rubik font so I'm going to just copy this value and paste that in the style.css file right here. Save the changes and as you can see this font is applied to this text and just after this navigation menu I'm going to select now bar and select now items and I'm going to just specify align right to this navigation items. So I'm going to just see here text align right. When you save it you can see you have this navigation items on the right side. Just after that I'm going to just select now bar and select the navbar brand class as well as I want to select h5 heading tag in the navbar brand class. So I'm going to select this heading and I'm going to specify padding to it. So I'm going to just say padding 0.4 rem and 2 rem as well as I'm going to just specify margin 0. Set the changes. This will add some padding to this hotel text and just after that I'm going to just select nav items and select nav bar nav class and to this class I'm going to just specify list style type to remove these dots so I'm going to just say here none so I'm going to specify this property to the ul tag when I save it you can see I don't have these dots here now I just wanted to style these navigation items so I'm going to toggle this right here I just specify style so I'm going to just say here so I'm going to first select now bar now and select now link and to this now link I'm going to first specify display property so I'm going to just say here display inline block then I'm going to specify font size 1 rem and I want to specify margin so I'm going to say margin 0 and 0.9 rem this will add some margin between these navigation items. Now just after that I'm going to just style this button. So I'm going to just select it. So I'm going to just see here now bar now and I'm going to select this button using a class. So I just specify sign in class to this button. So I'm going to say here sign in to select this button and to this class I'm going to first specify border none. I will remove border of this button then specify padding 0.4 RAM and 2 RAM. Just after that I'm going to specify border radius 1 RAM and I want to specify margin right so I'm going to say margin right 2 RAM. Just after that I want to specify background so I'm going to say here background and I'm going to specify some background to it and I want to specify font family to this button so I'm going to just say here font family and just specify here ruby. Now just after that let me just specify some background color to the body. So I'm going to just open the body tag here and just to specify here background liner gradient. So I'm going to just specify some liner gradient to the background. So as you can see we have the background color. Now in this container I'm, I'm going to create here a toggle button to turn on and turn off lights. I'm going to have here a timer behind these shops. So let's get started and create that first. So I'm going to just open my index.html file and in this file now just after that just after this navigation menu in the container I'm going to create here a lightning switch. So I'm going to just create here a command and just here light switch. I'm going to just create a division tag with the class light switch and in this division tag I'm going to just create input tag with the type checkbox. I'm going to use this checkbox as a switch. And to this checkbox I'm going to specify name and I'm going to specify name to this input text box. So I'm going to just say here switch and I'm going to specify id switch. Just after that I'm going to create here a label for so I'm going to just say here checkbox. And just after this div I'm going to have here an image. So I'm going to just create here a division tag with a class img layer. And in this div I'm going to just create img tag with the source attribute. And to this source attribute, I'm going to just specify my asset folder 
and select my second image night4.png and to the alt attribute I'm going to just say here shop and just after that I'm going to specify ID shops now just after that just after this division tag I'm going to create here my timer so I'm going to have here h4 heading tag with a different span tag so I'm going to just create here a span tag for the hours so I'm going to just specify here a class to the span tag hours and just specify the default value here I'm going to just say here 20 and create a span tag again with the class minutes and specify the default value or you can say the hard coded value I'm going to just say here 35 and create a span tag for seconds so I'm going to just say here seconds and I'm going to just say here 0 2 save the changes and when you open your file you have your checkbox here you have your shops as well as you have your timer now this is all static right now now I want to add some style to this section so I'm going to just open my style.css file and in this file I'm going to style this section so I'm going to just create here now in the style.css file I'm going to create here a command and just say here styling checkbox just after this command I'm going to just style this checkbox so I'm going to just first select this light switch class so I'm going to just say here light switch and specify here width 40 pixel and height 7 pixel then I'm going to specify background color so I'm going to just see here background RGB color so I'm going to just specify RGB the red is going to be 192 the green is going to be 188 and the blue is 188 save the changes and just after that now let me just toggle this window on the right side now just after that I'm going to specify margin 20 pixel and specify auto save the changes this is going to center this checkbox just after that I'm going to say here border radius 100 pixel save the changes and just after that I'm going to select my label so I'm going to just see here lightning switch label and I want to specify some style to this label so I'm going to just say here display property block then I'm going to specify width 19 pixel height is going to be 19 pixel then I want to specify background so I'm going to just see here background and want to specify the default color so I'm going to choose the default color first and then specify my background color so I'm going to just see here background and to this background color and to this background color I'm going to specify label gradient variable here like this so as you can see we have this box here so I'm going to just specify some border radius to this box so I'm going to just say border radius 50 pixel and just after that I'm going to specify position absolute and specify top property minus 6 pixel and left property is going to be minus 1 pixel so as you can see you have this dot on the top now I want this dot right here so I'm going to just specify position property to this light switch so I'm going to just say here position relative so when I specify this position relative property to this light switch class I'm going to have this dot right here when I save it you can see I have this dot here right now just after that I'm going to specify box shadow property to these dots so I'm going to just say here 0 pixel 2 pixel 5 pixel and 0 pixel and I want to specify RGBA color so I'm going to select RGBA and then specify the light shadow to this label and just after that I'm going to just specify the last property transition transition all 0.5 second is save the changes and now just after that I want to specify some style to this checkbox so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first select this checkbox so I'm going to just say here light switch then select the input tag and using the attribute I'm going to select the checkbox so I'm going to just say here type checkbox and to this checkbox I'm going to say position absolute then specify left property minus 8 pixel and top property is going to be 
minus 6 pixel. Just after that, I want to specify some width to this checkbox. So I'm going to say here width 50 pixel. Set the changes. This is going to add some width to this checkbox. So you can see this checkbox right here. Now, just after that, now what I want when I check this checkbox, I want to move this circle on the right side. And when I uncheck this checkbox, I want to move this circle on the left side. So in the style.css file, I'm going to create an event to slide this circle. So I'm going to just first select the light switch class and then select my input checkbox. So I'm going to select that using the type attribute. So I'm going to just see here checkbox. And just after that, I'm going to just call an event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just press colon here and just call check. So when the checkbox is checked, I want to select the label. So I'm going to just create label and move this label right here. So I'm going to just say here left 25 pixel. So when I click on the checkbox, this will move this label right here. So when I check this checkbox, you can see the label is moved. And when you uncheck this checkbox, this is going to specify the default left property to this label. Right? Now, just after that, I just want to specify background color as well so I'm going to just here background tomato this is going to slide this circle right here and change its color like this right and now the last thing we need we need to hide this checkbox so I'm going to just say here I'm going to just first select this input checkbox and just specify opacity 0 save the changes so as you can see you have your checkbox here now, if you want to check this checkbox, you just need to click here. This is going to check this checkbox. And if you want to uncheck this checkbox, just click here. Now, let's move on and specify some width and position to these shops as well as to this timer. So, I'm going to just open my style.css file. And in this file, I'm going to first create here a command. Just say here shops. And I'm going to first select img layer class and specify here position absolute and I want to specify top property 50% and left property 22% so you have these shops right here on the bottom and then I just wanted to select these shops so I'm going to just say here img layer img and just specify width 59 vertical width so the changes this will specify some width to the shops right now just after that i want to specify this timer behind the shops so i'm going to just create here i'm going to just select the container and select h4 heading tag i want to increase the size of this timer as well as i want to display this timer behind the shops so, so i'm going to just increase the size so i'm going to just see here font size 11 ram so as you can see you have this timer here just after that i'm going to just specify margin 0 and 0.4 ram just after that i want to specify some padding 0 and 1 ram i want to specify some margin top to this h4 heading tag so i'm going to just say here margin top 3 ram so you can see we have this timer behind these shops now just after that I want to specify some font family so I'm going to just see here font family and I want to specify this font to this timer so I'm going to select it and specify that right here save so the changes I just want to specify margin top 1 here so I'm going to just say margin top 1 like this now what I want I want to specify some gradient color to this timer so you can't specify gradient color using the color property if you specify that you're not going to get anything if i just say here color primary gradient you're not going to get anything here if you want to specify color you need to specify few properties here to specify the gradient color to the text you just need to call the background clip property and specify here text as well as you need to call the webkit background clip property as well so i'm going to just say here webkit background clip and I'm going to just specify text here. Just after that, I'm going to call WebKit text fill color as well. So I'm going to just say here WebKit text fill color and just specify here transparent. 
and as you can see we just specify transparent color to this text now to specify gradient color before these three properties you need to specify gradient color using the background property so before these properties we just need to call the background color primary gradient save the changes so now as you can see we just specify gradient color to the text right as simple as that now just after that if you take a look at this simple html landing page this is not going to do anything this is just a static html file now i want to add javascript to make this template dynamic so what i'm going to do is when you check this checkbox i want to turn off the street lights as well as the shops lights and when you uncheck this checkbox i want to turn on all these lights right and instead specifying the hard coded values here i'm going to specify the current time here so I'm going to just open my editor and just open my main.js file which we already linked to my index.html and in this main section I'm going to make this static html file dynamic. I'm going to create here immediately invoke function expression. To create that just specify the parenthesis and in this parenthesis just create a simple arrow function. So I'm going to just create here an arrow function like this and to call this function you just need to specify here parenthesis. Right? So this is the syntax of immediately invoke function expression. So when the main.js file is called, this function is automatically invoked. Now in this function, I'm going to first select this our class. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just see here constant hours document dot query selector and I'm going to select hours. Right? Now just after that, I want to select this minutes, this seconds, and as well as I want to select the container as well. Now, if you want to select more than three elements, I'm not going to write the same statement again and again. To solve this problem, I'm going to just create here a function and just specify the function name selector. And to this function, I'm going to just say element and just return document dot query selector and just specify here element. So the changes and instead of specifying this document dot query selector I'm going to just say here selector and you just need to call here hours right as simple as that just after that I'm going to select my minutes so I'm going to just say here minutes and I just select this minute as well using the select function and just after that I'm going to create another constant variable seconds I'm going to just call the function selector and I'm going to select these seconds. Just after that, I'm going to create another constant variable, select the container using the selector function. So I'm going to just say here container, right? Now, just after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create here a command and call set interval method. So I'm going to just say here set interval and specify a function as a parameter and then specify the interval here so i'm going to just say here interval after every one second so i'm going to just specify 1000 here so this method will call this function after every one second now in this function i'm going to just say constant time and create an instance of date object so i'm going to just say here new date now once i have the date i can get the hours minutes and seconds so let's say if you want to get hours from this date you just need to call the time dot get hours so this is going to return the current hours i want to specify the current hours minutes and seconds instead specifying these hard-coded values so i'm going to just say here hours dot text content and just specify here time dot get hours just after that select my minutes so i'm going to just say here minutes and just here text content is equal to time dot get minutes and just after that i'm going to say seconds dot text content is equal to time dot get seconds so the changes and now you can see we have the current time here right as simple as that now what if the time is less than two digit so this is going to happen if you have less than two digit now to solve this problem you just need to call if and else conditional statement so i'm going to just say here if 
the hours is less than 9 I'm gonna call the conditional statement the shorthand conditional statement and just call the backtick operator with the default 0 and just call here time dot get hours and if this function return value greater than 9 I'm going to execute this false statement so I'm gonna just say here time dot get hours just after that I'm gonna do the same for the minutes as well so I'm gonna just say here if the minutes is less than 9 I'm gonna return the default 0 before the minutes and I just wanted to wrap time dot get minutes and if the get minutes method return two digit value I'm gonna just see here time dot get minutes I'm gonna do the same for the second as well so I'm gonna just see here 9 I'm gonna call the default 0 here and just see here time dot get seconds and just say time dot get seconds so the changes we have the default 0 here now just after that what I want when I check the checkbox I want to turn off all the street lights as well as the shop lights so I have that image right here in the asset folder if you open the night 5 image you can see I have this image here I just want to replace this light image with this image so I'm going to just open my main.js file and right here I'm going to just create here a command checkbox lights now to select this checkbox I'm going to just create here a constant variable checkbox and just say document dot get element by id and just select the checkbox using a switch id so I'm going to just say here switch I also want to select the image so I'm going to just say here constant img is equal to document dot get element by id and I want to select the image using the id shops now I'm not going to use this container I'm going to remove it and just after that right here I'm going to just say checkbox dot on change so I'm going to call the on change event of the checkbox of this checkbox input tag and I'm going to specify handler for this event so I'm going to just create here a function the arrow function and in this function I'm going to just say here if and in this if function I'm going to say if the checkbox is check I want to change the image so I'm going to just pass event parameter to this function so I'm going to just say here event now in the if statement what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say here event dot target dot check now if the checkbox is checked I want to execute this if statement or I want to execute this else statement now in the if statement I'm gonna just say here img dot source and to the source attribute I'm gonna just specify my asset folder and just say here night 5png file just copy the statement paste it in the else statement and instead specifying this night 5 I'm gonna just say night 4 image here save the changes and just after that right here if I check this checkbox this is going to turn off all the lights so if I just check this checkbox you can see this is going to turn off all these lights and if you uncheck this checkbox this is going to on all these lights now your HTML file is ready right I just find an error here now let's say the second is equal to 9 this is going to execute this false statement instead executing this true statement so instead specifying this 9 specify 10 here so I'm going to just update this 9 to 10 save the changes and now that's perfect now if you have any question you can ask me anytime in the comment section don't forget to like this video if you find anything useful subscribe to this channel I will see you in the next tutorial